Welcome back to the workshop. We want to continue taking a look at section 4.1, graphs and the representations. And we're going to continue looking at when it's possible to represent the same graph in different ways. Such graphs, uh, when we say they're two different ones, are, are actually called isomorphic, when we have two graphs that are essentially the same. They're isomorphic. And that's what we introduced in our last video. So here, we want to take a look at uh, some things that help us identify when two things are isomorphic or maybe are not isomorphic. So let's take a look at a theorem, which will help us out, which also introduces a couple of ideas. So let F be some isomorphism of graphs G1 and G2. So G1 and G2 are isomorphic. G1 is isomorphic to G2. Then for any vertex in the graph G1, the degree of V and the degree of its image are equal, okay? If we're going to preserve adjacencies, if I have U, V, and W, okay? And I want to have A, B, C, Let's say that I actually don't have this guy here. So if I take f of u is equal to b, here I can see that it clearly doesn't make sense because there's an adjacency that's not preserved. u is adjacent to w, b is not adjacent to c. Okay, So adjacencies are not preserved here because these two are not isomorphic. So if they were isomorphic, we would have to have the edge here, which means that the degree here is two, the degree here is two. If they didn't have the same degree, then we would end up not actually satisfying adjacencies. This has two adjacencies, this only has one. So that's what, we, what happens when we have, if we were to have unequal degrees. We might have three adjacencies to preserve, and then in the, in the image, we only have two adjacencies so there aren't all three adjacencies preserved. That would be a problem. So that, uh, that's the idea anyway of uh, why our degrees must be equal, right? It's all about preserving uh, the adjacencies. Okay, so this is a property. The degree of a vertex is a property of the graph that's true in G1 and it's true in G2, right? It, both graphs have the property of a, a vertex of that particular degree. So a, a property in general is said to be a graph isomorphism invariant. That is, it doesn't change if whenever G1 and G2 are isomorphic graphs and G1 has this property, then uh, so does G2. So what we're saying here is if we have a, a vertex of degree three, in our first graph, then we're going to have a vertex of degree three in our second graph because it's invariant. It doesn't change between the two graphs. So has a vertex degree uh, k is an example. That's an invariant. What's another invariant? Well, in order for us to have a one-to-one -one correspondence, they have to have the same number of vertices. It has, uh, let's see here, n vertices. And then another one, right? If we're preserving all of the adjacencies, then we have to have the same collection of edges, essentially. So it would also have to have the same number of edges. So it has e edges. But another one that we looked at that we didn't even realize we were looking at is when we looked at graphs H1 and H2, we found the isomorphism by identifying a triangle and a square. Okay, triangle, triangle, square to square. So has, um, has a triangle is also a, uh, a graph isomorphism invariant. These are all invariants. Okay, 
the one here that has a triangle, we'll refine this a little bit more in section 4.2, uh, where we continue to develop more ideas regarding graphs. All right, so we want to show that these two graphs are not isomorphic. And what we have available to us are the tools that we just gave. What invariants are not satisfied here? Well, there's two different invariants that we could consider. So these graphs are not isomorphic. I think it's pretty clear here that they're not isomorphic. They, they don't, not only do they not look the same, but they don't look like you could even manipulate one into the other one. Why? Well, here's a house without a floor and here's a house with a floor, okay? No floor, floor. That's what we wanna focus on. So, uh, these graphs are not isomorphic since they have different number of edges, for example, since they have a different number of edges. In particular, H3 has one, two, three, four edges, while H4 has five. We could have said this a little bit differently. So, or, these graphs are not isomorphic since H3 has a vertex degree one. Here's a vertex of degree one in H3. Yes, there, there's actually two vertices with uh, degree one, which is fine, but all we have to do is identify one and say, hey, here's one that has uh, a, a degree one, and look over here. There are none with degree one. So H3 has a vertex of degree one, while H4 does not. Uh, so this probably should be has. So these graphs are not isomorphic since H3 has a vertex degree one while H4 does not, okay? If, if we had something that looked like this, our argument would no longer be quite valid. Although we could say that H3 has two vertices of degree one while H4 only has one vertice degree one, vertex degree one. But at the same time, the argument may have been better to say, hey, look, H4 has a vertex of degree three, while H3 does not. Okay, so, so that could be changed as well. But that's the idea there, showing that graphs are not isomorphic. So let's take a look at one more example where we're showing that two graphs are not isomorphic. And this one is really interesting. Uh, uh, it's really interesting because if we count, we notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. Okay, cool. So does this one have six vertices? If it doesn't, then they're not isomorphic. But it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it also has six vertices. Okay, well, what about degrees? Maybe the degrees don't match. So we have degree three, degree three, degree three, degree three, degree three, degree three. Oh, okay, so they're all degree three. Okay, so this one must have something different. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. Well, these are also all degree three. Huh, but, but we're saying these are not isomorphic. I'm pretty sure so far we're thinking it is. Mm, are they? Maybe they are. Let's count the number of edges. The number of edges can't match if they're isomorphic, right? Uh, one, two, three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine edges. 
Okay, so this one's got to have a different number of edges. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I've already got that one. 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 Got it. Got it. Nine. It also has nine edges. I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake in my notes. Aren't they, maybe these are maybe these are isomorphic. Well, there's one more thing to check. In our first example of showing that two graphs were the same, again, we found this matching. We found this isomorphism by considering a triangle. When there was a triangle here, it had to map to a triangle. If we go to our current example, we can notice, we can see that there is a triangle, there is indeed a triangle in this graph right here. Here's a triangle. But over here, there's no triangle, right? Take this edge, go to there. No, nope, that doesn't work. This edge, go to here. No, nope, that doesn't work. This edge, oh no, that's the only way I can go there. All right, let's go this way. This edge to here. No, this edge to here. No, this edge to here. No, doesn't matter what you do. You're not gonna find a triangle. So some of these things take effort to observe and aren't immediately obvious. G contains a triangle, while H does not. Hence, adjacencies cannot be preserved for any one-to-one uh, -one correspondence. Hence, adjacencies cannot be preserved for any one-to-one -one correspondence. And if we're not preserving adjacencies, then it doesn't matter if we have one-to-one -one correspondence or not, because it's not an isomorphism. Hence, G and H are not isomorphic. Thus, G and H are not isomorphic. So that's kind of interesting, right? This idea of having a triangle is a graph isomorphism invariant. So if one of the graphs has, an iso has a triangle, then the other one has to have a triangle too. It actually works out that if one of them has a, uh, if you can make a loop with four edges, if you can make a loop with five edges, six edges, however many, you have to be able to do it in both graphs, okay? in order for them to be isomorphic. That's one of the invariants, okay? All right, so yeah, we'll leave it there and we'll call it good. That's the end of the section. So that's all that I have for you guys right now. I'll see you guys back in the workshop for section 4.2 a little bit later. Have a great day.